Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to show you what's really behind the Switch keyboard in C Sharp. Now, the Switch keyboard has existed in C Sharp since its inception, however it has gotten a few updates, especially when we got Switch Expression, and in this video I'll show you exactly what happens when you compile code with a Switch keyboard, because it will help you understand if you should be using it in the first place, because I'm pretty sure you do not expect what's happening behind the scenes. If you like the type of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe and the sub notification bell. And for more training, check out nickchapsis.com. All right, so let me show you what I have here. I have a .NET 8 application, and all I'm going to do is show you the simplest example of a switch keyword. So here, all I have is I'm getting a random number from 1 to 10. Remember that the upper bound on random.next is exclusive, so this can only be from 1 to 10. And then I'm switching on that number, so traditional integer-based switch, and then I'm printing that number based on the case that I'm going into. Now, I could do many things. For example, I could use the number here and have it as a parameter, so something like this. However, I'm not doing this intentionally just to focus on the switching aspect itself. This won't have any impact in what we're going to see. Now, what most people think happens when you compile a switch expression like this, and I'm going to go into release mode to get the most optimized version of the code, is that a jump table is generated behind the scenes, and when you have that number here, you jump directly to the case that corresponds to that number without having to traverse any of the other cases. So let's see what happens. I'm going to use the IL viewer over here, and I'm actually going to show you the low level C sharp first. So as you can see, the code you compile on the left will be turned into the low level C sharp on the right. So we're going to switch again on that same thing, but we're going to use a minus one offset, and then we're going to change the cases from zero all the way to nine. And this is an optimization of the compiler. And then if we go to IL, what you're going to see here is that if I just click on the switch, and scroll up, we're going to have a switch on those IL instructions. So this is the jump table that is being implemented here. And then as the value comes in, we go straight into the value. Now, here's where this gets interesting. If I simply go and I add a zero on every case, so it's no longer from one all the way to 10, but it's 10, 20, 30, 40, and so on. And I'm not going to change the values just for simplicity, but let's just say I do this and I compile then watch what happens. The IL is no longer the same. I no longer have that same switch and that jumping going on because we are no longer sequential. We're no longer from 1 to 10. We're disjointed. And that doesn't allow the compiler to actually build the jump table. So the low level C sharp now, as you can see over here, will try to find the optimal case by generating effectively what is a binary search algorithm where we're getting the midpoint over here and we say that if it's less than or equal to 50 then go here in this branch otherwise go in the other branch and then take another midpoint and say is it the value okay is it on the left or is it on the right and try to optimize getting that value and going to that case like this this is the most common thing that people don't know they assume that everything that has to do with integers and switches always converts into a jump table that is not the case now switch i think in c sharp 8 got an update and you can now also have switch expressions so that same code i had before can now be written like this where i pass down the number i switch on it and i have an expression and you can also have pattern matching as well by the way now the interesting thing about this approach if i compile it is that on that example it will be lowered to that traditional switch exactly as i had it before allowing it to optimize and generate that jump table so we still have the switch keyword and the jump table however if i go ahead and i mess with the fact that they're continuous then if i just recompile it we are losing all that and we fall back to what we had before. So switch expressions is not something just magical and out of the ordinary. It uses a lot of the same rules as the switch because effectively it's compiled from switch expression to switch when it's possible and then the same rules apply. Now, of course, they don't apply everywhere, but where it can, it will try and optimize it. But an integer is not the only thing you can switch on. You can actually switch on effectively anything. But one of the most common things that people tend to switch on is actually a string. So let's revert to what we had in the beginning and now say that this is a two string and try to switch on that string. What do you think will happen here? Well, this is actually surprisingly interesting and people who say that the compiler doesn't try to optimize a lot in C sharp, 
Well, in some scenarios, they are wrong. So if I show you the compiled code now, it's very interesting because there is a length check. So it detects that I have strings of different lengths and it tries to optimize for that length. So for example, if the length is two and I have a check, then I'm getting the value directly. So it's way faster on this. Otherwise, it is generating a switch based on the value of the case to try and optimize and create that table when it can. So actually, if we go here, you will see that I have a jump table to optimize for all of these use cases, even though there are strings, there's a smart conversion to an integer, and then that is used to optimize it. However, this is only the case because I have many cases. If I only had something like four cases or three cases and I compile, then watch what happens. I no longer have a switch or many fancy checks. I just have if checks. So if this is one, then return. If it is true, return. If it is free, return. This is the same for when I add a fourth one, a fifth one, and a sixth one. But the moment I add a seventh one, then that optimization kicks in. And from that point on, it will try to switch because at that point it is faster to do so. So it will always try to detect what is the fastest path. Switch expressions are no different. The same rules apply. So if I was to compile something like this, the same conversion will happen behind the scenes, the same switch will exist. But if I go ahead and I add that zero that I removed before from all the cases and I recompile, because of the length being two for most of the use cases, it will still try and optimize for that length. And by the way, same rules apply if you're pattern matching. So if I have a wrapper class over here and I create a wrapper using that number, which is a string, and then I'm passing down the wrapper as a parameter and I'm pattern matching to get the value, same rules apply. If I show you the code, it is effectively the same. However, what if the strings I have to deal with are wildly different, so of different lengths and sizes and shapes? So if I have something like this and this one, what happens when the compiler has a harder time figuring out how to optimize this? And let's make this a bit smaller. Well, let's see. If I compile this and I go to the lower level C sharp, as you can see, this is wildly different now. We have a length check again, and there's optimization that tried to happen on a smaller scale. So there are cases where a switch has been generated to optimize for that. But in other areas, the length will be used on its own to try and minimize the traversal that has to happen with each item. Which makes you wonder if in some cases we're getting a binary search algorithm, which is an average and O log n operation in terms of speed, would it be faster to actually use a dictionary which is supposed to be O1? Well, let's take a look at that. I'm going to create a benchmark class and I already have a benchmark.net installed in this project and I'm going to add the following benchmark. So I have a bunch of different items, values here, just different strings and then I have a dictionary. So this is an array, this is a dictionary and the first benchmark just gets one random item from that array and then I'm using a seed to get a random item from that array deterministically so in every test execution the same values will be retrieved for each individual test so they will retrieve basically the same sequence of values. And then I'm getting a random item from that array in the first case, and then I'm switching on it to return the string. And then in the other use case, I do the same thing using the dictionary to get a random item and retrieve it using that dictionary. So what I'm going to do here is just go ahead and run this. I'm going to just return early and say benchmark runner dot run benchmarks. It is in release mode. So let's see how the switch with strings of different shapes and sizes compares with the dictionary. So results are back and let's see what we have here. So as you can see, switch is very close to the dictionary. However, keep in mind that as your switch grows, it can get slower compared to a dictionary. Now, this does not mean that you should be using a dictionary everywhere because even though there's no memory allocated in retrieval of the string in this case, you still have to allocate that original dictionary. Now, you don't see it here because it is maintained throughout the application's lifetime, which can be fine. However, keep that in mind. Well, what does that mean for you and the code you write? Well, in my opinion, if you have a small number of use cases on switches and small can be all the way up to the 30, then there is no point to even worry about this. But you should know that switch is not just some magic thing that behind the scenes we just always find automatically the case you want. There is some processing and the compiler will try to optimize this as much as it can. In fact, in C Sharp 12, we're getting another optimization. And if you want to know more about that, you can check my Keep Coding podcast on that separate YouTube channel. 
and please subscribe as well, where I had a discussion with Stephen Taub talking about this exact thing. But what do you think? Did you know about this optimization and did you know that behind the scenes not everything is a jump table? Leave a comment down below and let me know. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my Patreons for making videos possible. If you want to support me, you can find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe for more content like this and the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.